For me, I played games really, really at an early age, and, and I remember my aunt bringing home asteroids on the Atari 2600 and just being amazed that I could actually control something and influence something on the television. That alone really, really hooked me in. The one riveting experience that I remember as a gamer where the content for the first time really sucked me in and I thought, well, this medium is very, very interesting, I was actually playing Ultima 3 on my Atari. I remember vividly not ever having that kind of experience in a book or watching a television or anything like it. You know, I was participating, I felt for things, and at the same time, I felt I was making some of that happen myself. The goal of a game design, and really when you create a game, is that you really want to introduce people to a world and create universes where they can really feel that's living and breathing. It's vast, there's a lot to explore, and it's very dynamic in many ways. It's almost like a, a pool of content where you can just dive in, be completely immersed, and just relax and have a good time as you just watch everything just peel in. When playing a, a game, the main goal for someone playing a game is to be totally immersed and engaged in the game. The way that happens is that all the elements of the game have to work together to create a satisfying whole, whether we look at that as being on the aesthetic level or the experiential level. The way that a game will draw a player in so that they feel that they are involved and engaged in a completely satisfying experience is when all the elements of the game, including sound, uh, gameplay, uh, camera work and graphics and so on are working together to create a believable world and a completely uh, realistic space in which to interact with the game. As a designer, I think the thing that we really try and do um, is, is very situational sometimes. You know, we want to get, in general, we want to get a lot of emotions from the player. We want them to be happy, we want them to be excited, we want them to be curious. And just curiosity goes a long way. You know, when you're looking at level design, one of the things that's very interesting is the amusement parks. You know, in a game, when you get to a new area, you should be completely entranced in the new possibilities. What enemies are here? What items are here? What weapons are here? What characters are here? What are the things that are here for me to do? Uh, just like when you go to a amusement park and you turn the corner and you go, do I want to go on this roller coaster? Do I want to go on this free fall thing? Um, you know, that's the same way it should be from a, from a game standpoint. It should be, here I am, look at what I've got. What's here for me? What's cool? What can I check out? One of the best tests that you can do is when you're focus testing is just continually ask the players if they know what time it is. And if they start losing track of time, they really are starting to realize that they're getting into flow. Flow is an experiment, um, a very famous experiment now in, in the world of psychology, um, really headed up by Professor Zixant Mahai. And it really talks about how people feel when they get into the groove of things, essentially. As a psychologist, of course, I'm really interested not so much in the technology of the game, but I'm interested in the impact it has on the end user. I'm interested in the psychology of the game player. In order to generate flow with video games, I think what we want to do is understand what kinds of experiences can produce flow. If you're talking about a video game in which there's competition, the competition needs to be well balanced. You get into flow when you're playing tennis against an opponent at about your level of ability, maybe a little bit above. If you're playing with somebody that's way too good, you get crushed, no flow. If you play with somebody that's nowhere near as good as you, you get bored, no flow. If we create games that have great gameplay, that's balanced so that you have a challenge, but it's not overwhelming, but it's also not underwhelming. Uh, and so I think that uh, for me, moving into the theory of flow, what creates this psychological state in the end user and drawing from those flow principles uh, a general set of statements, uh, that constitutes for me the core of engagement theory. Engagement theory is the central theory that Silicon Knights uses to create games. It's expressed ironically in the formula because there is no formula for making games. And we strongly feel that by combining all these parts equally, that the game itself will become greater than the sum of its parts. When you look at a film, you sometimes tend to forget that there is a frame around the image and you project yourself into the world of the film. What video games look for is something, uh, some kind of interaction that's deeper. It's engagement on uh, a mental level as well as a physical level. Engagement theory really is when every single aspect of the game comes together and makes something that is greater than every little part of that. And one of the things that is incredible about it is 
It can be something so subtle as you're in the middle of combat and the music starts to ramp up and some other characters run in that you've met earlier in the game and you've kind of grown a bit of an attachment to or you know their background or you have some information about them that makes them interesting and the, the fight keeps on going on and the music's going up and up and up and then you finish that battle and you look over at that that guy that you knew and you fought the battle with and you just kind of go, oh, what's next? I would have to say if I had to summarize overall as a designer what we're looking for you know, from a gamer standpoint for the experiences, they, they should smile, they should have fun, and they should be happy in what they do. When we're creating games, we're always trying to create the best experience possible for the player. And it's really about engaging and immersing the player into worlds where they can have fun, where they just can escape from reality and just be purely entertained. And that's what we try to do with every video game that we create. It's really kind of hard to, to summarize, but it's that big package that comes together and if they pick up the controller and they're smiling, that's the goal. Thank you.